recording this video when I was still pregnant. And obviously, I'm not anymore. <laughs> um, but I wanted to um, redo the introduction because I don't think that it all um, filmed. And then I actually went to the hospital the next day. So trust me, there's an end to it. But whenever somebody tells you, oh, your labor will be so much faster, your second one, it's total, it's total crap. Total crap. Hopefully yours isn't. <laughs> but anyway, here's a video on false labor, not Braxton Hicks, false labor, and then early labor, and here's the princess. She's finally here. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for crazy videos about labor all the time. I don't know. Anyway, thanks. Bye, y'all. Love you. The princess, 36 weeks, 36 weeks. Look at this baby belly. Isn't this huge? Hey guys! Alright, so I um, have been having contractions for like two weeks and some of them started out, you know, as Brax, Bra bleh, yep, Braxton Hicks contractions but last weekend I ended up in the hospital um, and false labor. But the thing is, I thought that false labor and Braxton Hicks were the same thing and apparently they're not. Um, the way that they described it to me is that False labor is when your contractions are actually like one on top of the other and they are actually painful, can be painful, um, and they actually have a rhythm to them, but they're not making your cervix do anything. And so that's what happened to me Saturday. So let me start by saying this is my second pregnancy. However, with my first, I got preeclampsia and I had to be induced. So this whole, you know, like Braxton and Hicks and all that stuff, I didn't really get to experience that last time. So I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I'm not really exactly sure what I'm supposed to expect, you know? And so I, like, have started feeling Braxton and Hicks, and I mentioned them to my doctor. I said some of them hurt, and they, she said some of them would. And um, I said, okay, you know, how do I know when to go in? She said, well, you know, when they're timeable one on top of each other, they're painful. So Saturday, that happened to me. Um, they were non-stop, they were constant, they were timeable, they hurt, which um, they started progressively getting worse. I tried to sleep through them because I thought if this is the real thing, I want to get a nap, couldn't sleep through them. So we went to the hospital and they hooked me up to the monitor and the nurses, the nurses and the uh, resident that were there, uh, the doctor, they said, um, like they were like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were, um, you know, you might have this baby today. Now, mind you, last week I was 35 weeks pregnant. Actually, this was right before I hit 35 weeks pregnant. I was like 34 weeks and a couple days or something. Anyway, so yeah. Um, so I, no way I was... So I, um, I'm thinking, oh my God, we're going to have this baby. And at 30, uh, 35 weeks pregnant, they said, you know, the chances were smaller that you'd have to go to the NICU, but there was a possibility because I was only 35 weeks pregnant and I was a little concerned about that. So, um, but I'd already been having, like, you know, weird contractions for a week. So I, I was kind of, you know, expecting it to, to happen. So I, um... They hook you up, you know, to the monitor, they are doing all this stuff. So then they checked my cervix, and I was, like, not even a centimeter dilated, um, which they said, you know, that's normal because of, uh, you know, I was only 35 weeks pregnant. So then they wanted to check my amniotic fluid and make sure it was all there, and they did an ultrasound, and I was hoping to get a sneak peek of the baby, and I got to see, like, her, the top of her head and, like, an arm, and that was pretty much it. Um, because like she squished up in there or whatever. Um, and at first they couldn't find a lot of the amniotic fluid and they thought maybe some had leaked out. And then they saw, like I had a bunch of it like in my lower, um, the lower belly. And they said they were pretty sure that it, it looked good for where I was. So, um, they let me sit there in the hospital for a little while and they monitored me. And then they um, checked my cervix and I didn't dilate at all. And so they asked me, they were like, okay, well, we want to try to slow down your contractions because it's not dilating your cervix. So we are able to, like, they want to slow them down so that I can um, 
like hold the baby in for another week or two. So they gave me a bag of fluids. Um, if you have Braxton Hicks contractions or anything like that, it can actually like help if you uh, help them stop if you take a bunch of, or drink a bunch of water or get a fluid bag or anything like that. And they wanted to try to do that on top of giving me the shot. The shot um, they call it. The, uh, forget what the medicine's called, but its nickname is the fight or flight because it gives you like an adrenaline. I cannot speak English. An adrenaline rush, and it makes your heart beat super fast, and it's kind of scary. And they warn you. And you'd like jitter and everything for like a half an hour. And, um, but it's supposed to help stop the contractions or slow them down. And it slowed them down. They haven't stopped at all. And um, so they shoot you with it. And then like 20 minutes later, your heart starts beating fast and you're, you're shaky. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm afraid to move. I don't want my heart to be any faster. And then eventually it starts to wear off. And my contractions were still coming but they weren't as intense and they said it was safe for me to try to go home gave me this big long list of things that I had to do um, to try to keep the baby in and uh, you know when to come back if I had to and all that stuff and then I had to go to the doctor then follow up a couple days later had to go to the doctors twice this week and uh, the contractions are still there they're not as intense as they were on Saturday they gave me a medication um, to take which can make the contractions like stop or be less intense um, but I'm not taking them because I'm now um, 36 and a half weeks pregnant so I'm almost 37 weeks so I don't want to take them at this point because like if she comes heck yeah she's coming so um, yeah so I had to go in twice this week then check my cervix uh, which is great right I mean who doesn't love having their cervix checked that's like the most uncomfortable thing in the world not in the world, but it's pretty uncomfortable, but um, you get the point. So, yeah, going in twice a week to get it checked, and I went from half a centimeter to a whole centimeter, um, and that's it with all these contractions, with the, like, slowing them down with the medications. So, I'm not sure if they're going to pick back up. They told me um, now to start walking as much as possible and having sex because um, something in semen is supposed to thin your cervix. And I started taking primrose oil because apparently that's supposed to help thin the cervix. Um, I'm afraid to do anything that's going to start contractions worse because um, I'm already having them. So, <coughs> yeah, apparently there's a difference between Braxton Hicks and false labor. And I asked my doctor, what am I supposed to do? Because, like, you know, that's everybody thought I was about to have this baby. And then it was just false labor. And that's what happens during real labor. And they said if it happens again, you should go to the hospital. So I'm hoping not to have to have a few more trips to the hospital before the baby actually comes because I'm not a fan of sitting in the hospital like, you know, just on monitors for a couple hours just to go home without a baby, you know what I mean? Even though I was glad to keep her in um, until like the safety zone, you know, um, we're, at, um, we're right at 37 weeks so I'm hoping that she comes soon. They gave me the go ahead so I'm going to try. But if you guys have any awesome tips on trying to thin the cervix. Let me know, please, in the comments below. Um, yeah, if you have any awesome false labor stories, let me know because I was kind of disappointed. Even though I was relieved because I was 35 weeks pregnant, I was kind of disappointed. Like, you have to sit there and wait, and it's painful, and you don't get to bring home a baby. But, yeah. Anyway, that is what happened to me in this week. Um, I was planning on doing so many pregnancy updates this whole entire um, pregnancy and then I had hyperemesis really bad ended up in the hospital a lot uh, my story on that is in the link in the description bar below if you're interested but anyway subscribe for more mom stuff usually DIYs and saving money and stuff like that and if you're interested in all of the freebies that I got while I was pregnant for the baby um, those are down in the description bar and on the channel just subscribe because you know you want to I don't know <laughs> anyway thank you guys so much for watching bye all of I ended up taking quite a few more trips back to the hospital and I was in legit early labor for two full days with really bad contractions. That was a thing but my labor story is in the description bar below. But I mean she's here. It happened. <laughs> but anyway thank you guys for watching. Bye y'all. Love you.